Okay. So, before you ask, guys, because of my piece of fucking shit Samsung phone, I'm doing this again. So, anyways, on a side note, hey guys, what's up? It's Clay Ranger 143 here, and if I go into the other fucking room, I'm here along with a Thunder Buddy 01 person activating the piece of shit. Shit! Running snail radio, which is actually fucking crashing again because it, look, look at this. 59:38 p.m. Go oh, love that. Mm-hmm. Anyways. I'm currently raging at happy rails on my phone right now because I cannot get past this fucking part. But yeah, the gaming kingpin and chaos monks are also here because it's a yeah, group calls their thing on Discord. But um, anyways, in this episode of Radio Reviews, we're going to be reviewing a radio that has ripped off so many fucking products from a certain company. That is out of business. Particularly Radio Shack. And that radio would be the Honeywell RN 507 W. Okay, so, so, need I say that this has to be the biggest piece of shit I have ever, ever, ever reviewed. And I'm getting an alert through his end deck. What is this? What is this? Amber Alert cancellation. Brandon Reyes have been located by sheriff's deputies in the Blair Township of Michigan, found safely. Repeating, the Amber Alert for the 15-year-old Michigan girl has been canceled. Anime Taylor and Brandon Reyes have been found located safely. by sheriff's deputies in the Blair Township of Michigan, found safely. Thank you to the public for their help. Alert received. 232351. Uh... Nope, that's the wrong one. Um, hang on. They just come off, but anyways. Here it is. A broadcast station or cable system has issued an administrative message for all of Michigan beginning at 12.26 uh, a.m. and ending at 12.56 a.m. W114. Alert sent at July 20th, 2020 at 12.27 a.m. local time. A broadcast station or cable system has issued an administrative message for all of Michigan beginning at 12.26 a.m. and ending at 12.56 a.m. KTR 3901. EOM received at 7.20.20.002721 on monitor number 5. Bottom. Clear buffer? No. Hey, what is it? I'm messing around with the end deck. That for another episode. Um, but, <clears throat> as I was saying, this has got to be the biggest, baddest piece of fucking shit that I have ever, 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 ever reviewed 
in this fucking series. Let it be known that this radio is an absolutely shameful ripoff of so many Radio Shack products. How? Let me demonstrate that. I'm not done yet just because I'm silent. I'm not fucking done yet. That has to be the worst fucking ripoff I've ever seen in my entire fucking life. I have to agree. Absolutely disgusting. And before before I actually cause any noise complaints, I'm gonna have to cover the fucking speaker with my hand so I can. Um, so actually, I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna put the siren on the lowest volume. Even at number one, it's still fucking loud as shit. But that's a complaint you guys are going to be seeing. Um, but, uh, yeah. Here's the fucking thing. This radio has ripped off so many fucking products. So this should be a good episode for you guys to laugh your asses off. But, um, yeah. Unfortunately, we gotta get to this thing. This absolute air conditioner PS5 wannabe brick of shit needs to be reviewed. So, without further ado, let's do it quickly so I don't wake anybody up. Because it's a, it's a kind of fucking late. But I'm splicing in some... But anyways, yeah, um, I'm just going to do this quick. You guys get the point by now. So I'm going to get into the first two features, and that would be the fucking button beeps and the siren test. It's a ripoff, man. Just listen to this. Just listen to this. Okay, like I said, I'm going to do it quick since you already heard it. But here are the button beeps. You hear this shit? I was gonna say it was pretty much made clear to me before the feature was revealed, but yeah. What a 100% ripoff of a radio check radio. Unbelievable. Now, for the siren test, I'm going to have to cover my hand with a speaker. What? What the fuck? Uh, wh wait a minute. Cover, cover my hand with the speaker. Cover my hand with the speaker. Cover my hand with the speaker. Anyways, so, I'm gonna have so to do this so quick. Oh, Jesus. Anyways. Alright, here's the fucking siren test. You ready? Three, two, yeah. one. Oh. Three, two, one.
That is the worst excuse of a siren I've ever fucking heard in my life. This is unbelievable. And guess what, guys? This issue with the radio, this is just the start. So, as you guys just heard this radio basically fucking rip off every single Radio Shack radio that has the same firmware with each other, like the 12261 and, and so on, and the 262, the 521, the fucking 382. Yeah, you guys are going to cringe at the rest of what this radio has to offer as I splice in some footage that I filmed earlier in the week. So first, let's touch up on the bottom display. So, obviously on the top left you have your uh, your atomic time. I have mine set to 24 hours because, uh, because yeah, 24 hour time is actually uh, pretty damn cool. And if you also look right here, Beeps are right in the microphone. Um, Sorry. No worries. And if you see right up here, you actually can see a little bit of a of a high, uh, of a little glyph of the United States. That's because if there I turn go. the if I turn the the radio around, yes, there's buttons and switches on the back. Yeah, as if the ones on the front and sides weren't enough, and the top. So, the thing from the back looks like a fucking air conditioner, oh my god. So, if you look here, I'm going to try and focus in on here, so, uh, uh, come on. You see, it says zone on the middle line. That's because if I press and hold it, localized to California, to the, the western United States, it, then if I hold it down again, mountain, mountain time zone, and hold it down again, central, and then hold it down again to go back to where we were, eastern time zone. You can actually set this radio up to be localized to either the the western United States, the central, or the eastern United States. That's a good feature alone right there. Yeah. And then, Along with atomic time. And underneath, you'll see the, uh, the, the current date and the day of the week. Yep, it's July 16th on a Thursday. And then there's the indoor thermometer right there, or the current, uh, or the uh, local thermometer. Does it have an outdoor thermometer? It doesn't, it does not. Supposedly this radio came with a weather station, kind of like how the Oregon Scientifics do, but Are this you one, kidding me? Yeah, but, I, but they don't have, but mine didn't come with it. But, they got, so, so you mean to fucking tell me that they just basically did the same thing that fucking Sega did, uh, did? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh anyways, you basically mean to tell me that they pulled a Sega and do what they did to the Genesis and just added the fucking Sega CD and the 32X on top and the side like making this fucking brick of shit look like it's on life support? I think so. I haven't seen uh videos of uh, of the of the little attachment on the side. And yeah. The light will get to you in a second. Um, <laughs> oh, so, do I have to say some shit about it? And then over here, I, over here where the uh, on the top right, uh, that little uh, graph right here is for the uh, is for the what do you call it for the FM presets? Yeah, which you can actually store eighteen on. And this one I've never seen that icon before. I'm assuming that's for on battery power. Yeah. It's a plug with no uh, with an X on it. All right, and it's uh, because it's on battery power. By the way, I, need I mention? Also, you can change the uh, thing from Fahrenheit to Celsius. But since we're in the United States, we are normal people and use Fahrenheit. <coughs> Certain someone. <coughs> Twenty eight degrees centigrade. And I believe if I <laughs> hold down this. Th that button, it yeah, should. I'll go ahead and, oh, I okay. got it. I believe if I hold down that button, see that pyramid up there? That's flashing. I believe that means it's trying to connect to the uh, to the time server or something like that, or to the, the atomic time server. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't had much success with it, and also I just mainly never bothered with it. Um, 
And I believe one of the buttons on the back should change it between 12 and 24 hour time. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, so that's, uh, that's something about the bottom display, which... As well as the rear buttons. Yeah, because apparently this radio... Ha Actually, you know what? what I'm, oh, wait, we're not even done yet. I'm, I was going to try and count and see how many, radio, how many buttons this radio has. Well, let's, you want me to do it? Because I can. Sure. All right. One, two, three. These two are switches for the two alarms it has. Okay, so one, two, three... 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Fucking pot! You got a at, at least it's not as bad as a 519 that has oh, a God, 34. That has, that has 34. Fuck that. Oh my God. But yeah, this thing has 14 buttons. You know what? You know what this radio's like already? We haven't even gotten to the final thoughts yet here. And I already know what this is like. What? It's as if Honeywell tried to make the 12-262, 261. Etc. Better, but more complicated. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what it is, dude. The, I have a wild theory. What if it was actually ra oh, shut the fuck up? What What if it was actually Radio Shack who made this radio, and they didn't want to embarrass themselves any further, so they just licensed a third-party company? Yeah, who knows? Just think about it. Same badging with the buttons and everything. Same siren, same button beep, same firmware. The invalid ones are a little bit different sounding, but Yeah. If you saw if you saw my unboxing. Let's try not let's try to not break the switch, thank you. No, I wasn't trying to break the switch. It sounds like the the real button beeps. Oh. Yeah. Anyways. You were saying? So Shit, now I forgot what I was going to say. All you were right. saying something about the, uh, um, hang on, hang on. Sorry about that, we had to, like, check back on the recording, because he forgot what he was going to say, but he was talking about his unboxing of this radio, but yeah. how did that go? So, when I, so if you guys saw my unboxing, you would be able, you would be, you would hear the part where I said, uh, it's literally a fucking radio shack. It essentially is, but only teeny tiny difference is that the invalid button beep sound instead of uh instead of like this uh hold up i'm gonna sh oh, oops here here i got it instead right. of instead of this you get this they just left out that little and just let yeah that's so. the only difference other than that it's a fucking giant Air conditioner, television-looking head-ass Radio Shack ripoff. Oh, I know what to call this thing. What? I stand corrected. I know exactly what the fuck to call this thing. <gasps> oh, that antenna actually uh, goes into the back. Uh, oh yeah, the it does. Running snail ripoff. Well, actually, the running snail came out after that. So. Yeah, I know, but. Actually, no. Running snail head ass. Is that better? <laughs> but anyways, I know exactly what to call this thing. With how, how shitty it is, okay, with only FM only, the grooves on the top and the back right here, the buttons on the front here, you know what it looks like? 74210? No. What does it look like then? Ah, uh, the cable box. The Think about it for a second. Come over here. Think about it. Buttons on the front. Exactly the same layout. Look at the back. It's a fucking mini cable box. Provided yours truly by a third party company just like fuck to your internet. <laughs> All right, so with that out of the way, um, let's talk about something that's also a little bit different about this radio. So, even though it's not exactly too different, uh, oh sure, now it's not doing it. Here, um, yeah. so we need to get into that next discussion. All right, or feature actually. So why don't we just do it and. And I think I know what you were gonna. 
I was so, gonna talk about the uh, light arrangement, yeah. The light arrangement. Let's go ahead and check that out. So, if you notice up here, uh, come on, focus you. There. Uh, oh, really? Wow, okay. Um, oh my god, let me fix it here. Bitch. Cunt. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Fucking inconsistent. Okay. Now... <laughs> there we go. Now that I got the bitch fixed, do your... Do what you were gonna say. So, if I just kind of tilt that away in a... Actually, actually, let's set it to channel two. There we go. So, if you notice, warning is red. Obviously. Watch is yellow for some reason. At least it kind of matches the label. Yeah. And advisory. The label is blue, but yet the light is green. Like statement light green. And most modern weather modern weather radios, they don't have a green advisory light. It's yellowish green. Not complete green. That's like something you would see on a version 2 WR100 or something. Yeah, either that or... Hold up. Or like the power light on the, uh, on the, on some of the, uh, the two, on the 262 and 521. Yeah. And on and the, the uh, ready light. Yep, and the, as well as the uh, WX two sixty eight, the WX one sixty seven, and the WX uh, one fifty. Yep, exactly like that. You don't see them on modern we weather radios like this. This is made in two thousand six, presumably, and it still has a green statement light. By two thousand four, they already implemented new warning lights into each and every single radio. Excuse me. Every manufacturer followed Midland, Radio Shack. Like, that's why they have a 2003 and a 2004 version. One with advisory, one with statement. But this, they just said fuck it and just put statement green on advisory. So, there's that. And also, signal loss. Does that look familiar? Oh, hey, another rapper! So, with, with that... Um, why don't we talk about some about something else? Um, hmm. What else could we talk about? Uh, the FM capability, maybe? Yeah. Why don't we do that? Guys, this is a fucking blooper here. We're not even touching the tuning knob, and look what the fuck it's doing! What is happening?! Is it counting down at- Is it really? <laughs> um, I think we just discovered a, a new feature. Accidentally, maybe. Okay, that must have been some sort of uh, auto scan feature, but uh. Okay, let's let's. This is the FM capability. Yeah. FM only. I can't stomach her. I honestly listen. I'm not gonna mince words here. You need leadership throughout this. You know, you don't get any. You never got anything from Bessie Delos. Never. I really couldn't even listen. She just wants to open up the schools. It's important psychologically. Duh. We all get that. <laughs> so that was that was the uh that was WRCN? Yeah, WRCN. Yeah, WRCN. On, WRCN. Uh, on 103.9 out in uh, Long Island. I forget the, the location of it, but uh Okay. But yeah, so that was a quick demonstration of the FM capability. Yeah, FM only. And I fucking love it. And let me just uh reiterate what I was saying earlier. So, you would think that the volume knob it controls the FM, but not weather. 
You would and think it would do that to weather, but no. You gotta use the arrow keys! You gotta choose the arrow keys instead of the tuning knob. So, oh yeah! By the way, that's the lowest volume! One! No, vo vo volume one! That's the lowest possible volume you can get on this damn thing on the weather band. And it sounds like it's about to blow up! We could probably discuss that in the speaker quality. But... Oh yeah! We should do that! So, uh, do you want to talk about the uh, signal quality next, or do you want to talk about the speaker quality since we just mentioned it? Uh, speaker quality first. Okay. Nicholas, if this breaks on you because of this shit, I'm paying for a new Honeywell. If there, if there even is one, but... Sunday night, mostly clear... I'm gonna do it for ten seconds. Oh, no, not, not even ten. Five. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, no. Well, I'm afraid to go up to the max volume for... Well, I am afraid to do that. Well, what's the max volume on here? 16. Yeah, at 9 it sounds like it's going to blow up. Uh, what if I held it? No, that wouldn't even help. I'm afraid to go up to the max volume. That's how loud it is. But, oh look, if we go to the FM... But, let's move on to more important stuff, and that is... How are you? At the, max volume yeah, on the 15. FM is 15. Yeah, it has to be 16 on the weather, because look. That's the siren. Volume 16. The coastal waters for Point, New York, out 20 yeah, unbelievable. How did they make it this loud? Ah, uh, Honeywell. Honeywell, Honeywell, Honeywell. Well, certainly not, honey, and you're not feeling well. So, with that out of the way, with the terrible speaker... Let's talk about the signal quality next. Yep, or the reception. Inside first, then outdoors. All right, the reception is next. First, we're going to try the indoor reception. So let's go ahead and do that. Fairly decent. I have to try, so... Oh, I thought the... I thought the select, yeah. No, I was, gonna, I was gonna try and do that uh, weather band glitch that we were able to do with the 382 and the other ones. Oh, wh which one? It was the one where you pressed the button and did the invalid button. Uh, how, did, how do you do that again? I'm muting you. You're fucking loud. So, yeah, I think you had to press the... No, it doesn't do it. Yeah. So, so, so that's what they fixed. Other than that, they just ripped off a bunch of other shit and made it more complicated with other shit. To add on to the shit! Mm-hmm. Okay. And th now let's go outdoors. Yeah. Let's go ahead and do that.
why the hell did I hear a freaking rice rocket? What the hell? Who's in my, who the hell is in my car? Who is in my car? What the hell are you doing in my car? <laughs> why? Oh. Give me, give me the, give me the goddamn keys. Give me the goddamn keys. What are you doing in my car? I don't know. I came here to tell you something important, bitch. What were you doing in my car? I came by to tell you, sir, that you need to buy a Lurgis Pepsi edition. No. Here's, here's, here's what I think of your Pepsi. Oh. <laughs> wow! Hey, you know I'm getting my phone out too. What for? Hold up, let me close that. Ooh, COVID! What? Alright. What? Why were you in my car? Some phone. It's bigger than your dick. Alright, what's that called? No. But seriously, this so. Alright, so on that note, why don't we just, uh. While Dick Richard drinks his, uh, Pepsi, we should probably get it out of the, of the neighbor's yard. Right in my shoes. That literally just got on my socks. It got on me too. But. Hey, will this make you feel better? You want me to dump some on me like some slut would dump cum all over her? <laughs> let's just move on to the, let's just move on to the next you one. Me, you want it on my hat? Hmm? You do you, man. No. Um. Where'd the cap go? Uh, you you threw you threw it on the ground and splattered it. Yeah, but did it get shoved up? Ooh. Ooh. What? I think it went up my ass. <laughs> I think it went up my ass. And you just dropped the other one. We didn't. So, yeah, let's. Well, we should probably look around for the. I think that's part of the cap. Ow. Ow. Um. I think it shoved up my old ass. Well, let's see. You, you shoved it right there. <clears throat> oh. The cab literally just exploded. The cab just exploded. So that's where I shot it. <laughs> but I don't know. So yeah, Dick Richard is here and he carjacked me apparently. I did, bitch. What you gonna do about it? So yeah, let's just, uh, on that note, uh, why don't we do something else? Uh, why don't we continue the radio reviews episode while we're still out here? So, so after so after that little misconception where I got soda on my fucking sock, that was Dick Richard's fault. But who plays as Dick Richard? You. A bit? No, I do not. <laughs> I'm not six foot one. Yes, you, uh, bruh. You're literally about the same height as me. Literally, eye to eye contact, you're just about the same height. On that note, so, so now that we're outside, let's uh, do the uh, outdoor reception. Oh, there, now we're even. <clears throat> yeah, but you got it on your shirt. <laughs> well, do you want me to soak it on my foot too? <laughs> yes! No, okay. let's, let's not do that. Yeah, let's, let's actually not do that. I don't want the dog licking it up. So, let's do the outdoor reception next. All right. In cold front will result in the chance for showers and thunderstorms for most of the area on Friday. High temperatures will be then mostly cloudy after the night. WSJ 42 in Maryland. Lows in the lower 70s. Chance of allowing temperatures Friday Obviously to drop WXM into the upper 60s head. and low 70s. Now here is the hazardous WWE weather outlook for northwestern Connecticut and Mountain. western Mostly cloudy. And a chance of showers and thunderstorms. 
high temperatures likely remain. So, obviously, as you can tell, reception is much better outdoors. Oh yeah, way better outdoors than it is indoors. Which, by the way, it doesn't help that this thing gets signal loss half the fucking time. Yeah. I mean, it does it in your room, does it not? Yeah, it does. So, bruh. Yeah, this this entire radio is just a major bruh. So. Mm -hmm. It's always a major bruh. Because it's a, the whole thing is just a bruh. Look at it. The antenna is flimsy. Oh yeah, very flimsy. It copied a lot of Radio Shack's uh, known features, so to speak. Oh, Nicholas, now that you bring that up, we gotta discuss the build quality on this brick of shit. Let's do that right now. And looks like Long Hill Fire Department just uh, just is starting to pull out. What for? Ah, Fire call? Probably. I, I pull out my scanner, but it's hooked into my end deck. And there's no siren. Yeah, well, well, the only siren that I would really get to hear is the uh, is the federal signal cue off the front bumper. So, mm -hmm. either that or the uh, Touchmaster no, no. Delta. No, I mean like the a fire department siren, like a big siren, uh, like a tornado siren. No, I don't think we have that here, especially with how populated uh, this part of my town is. So, but. Aside from that, let's talk about the build quality of the Honeywell. Michael, Michael will start. I'm going to go change my socks. <laughs> All right, the build quality on the Honeywell RN507W. So, um, yeah, let's just go over here for it. Okay. As you can clearly see, this radio is definitely sturdy looking it's definitely huge it's definitely a brick and it's definitely <coughs> to say the least why i'll explain first off the felt on the front this can this can get all worn out with age over time some of it will actually start to rip and even if this if this material was old enough I bet you that I could tear off this piece of felt over the speaker covering it with just my fingernail. Yeah. But right now, that's a good thing because that offers protection for the speaker. The lights are good because LEDs always last long. Um, the displays are immaculately good both the top and bottom displays and uh as you can see here there's already some uh i don't know if that's meant to be yellow or if that's just partially yellow but i doubt it i think it's actually yellow firsthand the buttons feel cheap but they work Where's these? the tuner is decent but Who's to say it can't die like most of the Radio Shack 12 262s? Oh, man. Because this thing basically has the same firmware and motherboard as any of those Radio Shacks. The only thing is, it only has FM only. But uh, the tuning knobs are really good, as well as the volume knob. The switches on the back are good. And I did not mean to do that. Uh, and she was in this mix, folks. Uh, when you look at a bridge of flood... No, I didn't mean to do sleep. But anyways. Yeah. There's a lot of features on this radio that we have still have yet to discuss. But this radio, in my opinion, in terms of build quality on a scale of 1 to 10, about 5 or 6. But um, let's go on to the next feature, and that would be the FM presets. All right, next up, the FM presets. As Nicholas mentioned earlier, you can store up to 18 
Yeah, one, eight. 18 FM presets in this thing. And you can see them by pressing the memory button right up here if I press up the, radi the radio button. I didn't want that. All right, if you hold down the memory button, if you hold down the memory button for about five seconds, you see that little square next to the number 10? You can see that it is station number one. And if you press memory again, it selects it. Now if you go on to another station, let's say 99.1. Hold down memory again. It's in stereo sound. Press it again, and now you got station two locked up. Now let's try 99.9. .9. All right. Hold down memory. Memory number three. Now obviously I'm not going to go into every single slot in terms of presets that this thing has. Obviously not, that would be way too much. But, I think you can be able to select, you know, stations individually that are on the preset thing. So, that's alright. But, yeah, you can store up to 18 different presets, as I've said already. And uh, that's a very high capacity, especially for a radio this old. But now we gotta get into the last feature of this radio, and it's a bad feature. Maybe not for some people, but for most, let's just say this is very, very excessive. So, allow me to introduce you to the battery capacity actually I take that back second to last feature just discovered something else and forgot about it in the process but anyways the battery capacity why the hell do you need six AA batteries just to power this thing they literally did the same thing with the 262 and the 521. And they did it with this! They did it with this! And welcome back. Thanks. Um, after this episode is done, I'm gonna hose off the driveway. Okay. Um, this way, uh, this way we don't have an infestation of bees. Right. Actually, you know what? You do the battery thing. I'll hose it off. Are you sure? All right, so yeah, as I'm sure you heard Michael say, uh, this this radio takes six AA batteries. Um, I'm assuming, up, oh, up, oh, yep, and there goes the dog getting perked up because the hose turned on. So. So. I'm assuming this radio takes six AA batteries because of the dual alarm set, the uh, and all and some of the higher the higher end features, so to speak, on it. Um, mainly, like the FM, the store of the presets, the weather, the alarm should should because should the power go out, you're gonna need this or something like this to warn you of any bad weather. So, but yeah, I do kind of, I do kind of find it stupid that it requires six, but then again, I'm not the people at Honeywell that made this, and frankly, I wouldn't want to be the people at Honeywell that made this. So, yeah, I guess that concludes this, uh, battery rant. Um, I don't know what the next feature is planned, so... We're gonna do that. Okay, so, last feature on the Honeywell RN507W, and that would be the antenna. Now, as mentioned earlier, 
shut up. As mentioned earlier, the antenna does hide itself in this convenient little compartment. But as you can clearly see, it has a base attached to it. And uh, yeah, it is definitely, and I mean definitely, and Nicholas is fucking with the dog again. And for, for, for those who are blind, not that way. He doesn't, he's not a fucking bestiality freak. Okay. His grip is strong. God damn. <laughs> he doesn't want to let it go. I don't think he's gonna. Yeah, yeah I'm not even gonna try. <laughs> But anyways, as mentioned earlier, the antenna hides up in a coil inside a little hidden compartment. And then as soon as you push it up or pull it up, the base is exposed. And then that's when you can telescope it. Pretty nice feature. Kind of like the running snail did it. Yeah, that piece of shit. But, um... The antenna design itself is very compact, plus it keeps it safe from getting bent should anything happen to it. But uh, that's about it for the antenna. All right, so in conclusion on the Honeywell RN507W, this radio looks promising for what it is, but it is extremely rare to come by. Is it not? Like, how, how long did it take you to get this? Um, I'm not sure, actually. Um, I know I've just been uh, looking around in general just for some Honeywell radios, and that was probably like, one of the first ones I found. I thought, I didn't even know Honeywell made a radio. Let alone like this. I had no idea they did that. Yeah, I think I discovered it from, uh, from one of the older weather radio videos that have been out. You want to know something else? What? Oh my god. Um, I can think of the name of. Oh, okay. I just thought Honeywell was known for making box fans. I thought they were known for just making thermostats. Who knew, though? Who the fuck knew? Who knew? Certainly not us. Until now. But. This radio does have some flaws. The build quality is fairly flimsy, but in Got terms it, bitch. <laughs> in terms of reception and um, stuff like that, it's pretty good, honestly. But yeah, this radio is a, um, I would give this radio a 60-40. 50-50 for me. Yeah, I, I give it a 60-40 though. Yeah, mainly because I'm only doing it lower because uh, yeah, let's just say, for the amount of time that I've had this, I've never seen it activate. Oh, yeah. That brings it down dramatically. Yeah, because what's the point of having a weather radio if it's not going to activate? Yeah, that's another bad feature. The activation. It doesn't activate for jack shit. And before, you, and before you ask, before you ask, yes, location is set on all. But this radio is basically pulling a WX500 out of its ass. Yep. Exactly what it's doing. But, yeah. Anyways. Thanks for watching, you guys. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. As well as subscribe to ThunderBuddy 01's channel yep. for future videos like this. And he got the ball. Yep. So, stay tuned for more Radio Reviews episodes. And this is Clay Ranger 143 signing out along with Thunder Buddy 01, who's currently getting jerked by his dog. That can be taken way out of context. Well, if you got it, he's playing tug of war with me, and he's jerking my arm. Hope he doesn't get splinters on that wood floor. No, but I think it should be fine. Okay. Anyways, we'll see you guys in the next episode of Radio Reviews. Stand by. Stay safe. And goodbye, Sharpie.